Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to create a Greek style pattern like this in Adobe Illustrator. Now because these are vectors we can start with a very small document and use very small shapes. I'm going to click here on new file and I'm going to make a document that is about 300 pixels by 300 pixels in size. I'll click create. So we're going to start with rectangles. I'm going to set them so that they have a black fill and they have no stroke at all. And we're going to just click and make our rectangle. So I'm going to click here in the document and I want a rectangle whose width is 175 and whose height is 25. Now again, because these are vectors, it doesn't matter what size you start with, but I just suggest that you use my sizes so that this is actually going to work. So I'm going to select this with the selection tool, alt drag down to create three of these shapes. I'm going to rotate one, so I'm going to hold the shift key as I rotate it around and just move it over to one side. So we'll go back to our rectangle tool, again click in the document. Now this time we're going to do a rectangle that's 125 by 25, click OK. We're going to rotate this one around, again holding the shift key and then alt drag a duplicate away. We need two of those and they need to be pointing up. The last one we're going to create is 75 pixels long, still the same 25 pixel height. We want two of those that are horizontal, so I'm just going to alt drag a second one away. I'm going to alt drag a third one away and just rotate this one around so it's upright. And these are the elements that we need. If you stick to these values, it's going to be really easy to work with. So I'm going to move this one over towards the very edge of the document. I'm going to use these align options. If you don't see those, you can get to them by choosing window and then align and the align panel has everything that you need. Now we're going to align to the artboard, so we're going to make sure that we have align to artboard selected here. This needs to align to the very side and the very top of the artboard. We're just using this alignment to make sure everything goes in the correct position. This one is going up across here, so again it needs to align to the top of the artboard and to the left hand side. The next one we need is one of these, so I'm just going to move it into position here. It does have to align to the top of the artboard, but it also has to align to this other shape. And at this point we might be starting to find things a little bit difficult, so we're going to view and outline. Because outline view is going to tell us if things don't line up properly, so if things are not lined up, you're going to see it really, really clearly here in outline view. So I've got this piece and this piece and this piece. This one is in the way, so I'm just going to drag it out of the way right now. So now we're going to come across here, so we need one of these horizontal pieces. And again, we're just lining each of these up to each other. So there's overlap in all of these corners. That's just making the alignment of everything so much easier. So let's go and pop this one in place. And then we're going to come over here with this one. And then we're going to come down here with this one. And we're just going to line this one up. So if we select over everything and go to the transform dialog, we should see that we have a shape that is 225 pixels wide and 175 pixels tall. If you've got that, chances are, if your screen looks like mine does, that everything's lined up perfectly. So let's go back to view and then GPU preview because this is our shape. Now at the moment it's lots of little shapes, so let's go and grab hold of absolutely everything. I'm going to the Pathfinder, again you can see that by choosing Window and then Pathfinder, I'm going to unite everything. So this is a shape that's going to travel as a single shape, so instead of lots of little pieces, it is just a single shape. Now if we want to put a background on this pattern, we're going to do it now. So we're going back to our rectangle tool and we're going to create a rectangle, it's actually a square, that is 200 pixels by 200 pixels. We'll fill it with a colour, it doesn't matter what colour you fill it with, just so long as you have a different colour to the black that you're using for the Greek shape. And let's go and pop that. Again, that's going to be lined up to the left and to the top of the document. But it also needs to be behind the other shapes. So we're going to choose Object, Arrange, and then Send to Back. 
So this is what things should look like right now. And this is all we need for our pattern. So I'm going to select over everything. Before I go to the pattern dialog, I'm just going to turn off my artboard. So I'm going to view and hide artboards. So that's just going to give me a white background to work with because I'm working with a really small document. The small document might throw the visuals out a little bit. So with my shape selected, object and then pattern and then make. I'm going to zoom out so I can see the full design. At the moment I'm saying a 5x5 five five grid. You can see more or less, it doesn't really matter. But we do need to close up this gap and this gap is here. So we need to make the width 200 pixels. So essentially the width and height of our pattern are exactly the same width and height as the rectangle we have behind the pattern. So this is just perfect. Now if you don't want it to look like this, if you don't want this fixed grid, you could go and choose brick by row and do a half offset so you have a different sort of pattern. So I'm actually going to save this copy. I'm going to call this the offset one. And then I'm going to come back and make this a grid and I'm going to save that as well. So I've got this pattern two different ways. So we're ready to come out of here. So I'm just going to click cancel. I'm going to drag out a shape to test my design. So I'm just dragging out a shape here. I have my fill selected here or targeted. So this is my offset pattern and this is the basic grid pattern. They look very different in the patterns panel because the offset has more pieces to make up the pattern to allow for this offset. The simple grid one is just a very, very simple pattern. Now to be able to recolor them, the reason why we made the pink was so that we would have something that we could recolor, otherwise we wouldn't have a filled shape to recolor. I'm going to the recolor artwork dialog. Let me just close this down. I'm going into advanced options. Because I used black, you'll see that there is no color to map it onto. So I'm going to click here and add a new color. I'm also going to make sure that this is a arrow so you can see that by clicking on it you can flip it between a dash and an arrow. It has to be an arrow for us to go to edit and then to be able to change our colors. So let's go and grab this. Let me just unlink my harmony colors. We've got a black here but it's not affecting anything so that's not actually the color of this. So we can just delete that. It's this color here that is the black. But again it's not changing so it's a little bit disconcerting and the problem is this. So we're just going to adjust the hue and the saturation and the brightness so that we can start picking up a color with that adjuster. So we're able to create different color versions of this design. I quite like that sort of one where we've almost got a gold happening here. Just going to finesse that until I get what I want in the background. Click OK. And of course, because these are patterns in Illustrator and the swatches panel, we'll still have our original patterns and we've got our recolored version. So sticking with those values, it's pretty simple to create that design and then create this Greek style pattern in Adobe Illustrator. And don't forget before you leave to turn your artboards back on. Otherwise, it's going to be a little bit problematic when you go to do something else in Illustrator. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.